And welcome to the postseason edition <laughs> of Mark's Madness, joined as always by Mark Schein. I'm Matt Finkel. Girls are into districts yep. already. We got boys sectional semis took put started on Tuesday night, and more games coming up this evening, taping this on Wednesday. Lots to talk about, Mark, as there always is. Before we get started with postseason, let's go circle back and, and tie up some bows on some league titles that were settled over the weekend and begin with Spencerville defeating Lincoln View to claim their first ever outright league title. How about the Bearcats? You know, at one point, Matt, they were 4-3 and three on January 2nd, and then they got it going. And since that time, they're 10-2. and two. If you look at what they've done uh, as far as defensively set in that time, in those 12 basketball games, six times they've given up 50 points or less. So they've really gotten it going defensively. They have balanced scoring. Six guys averaging between 5.5 points and 13 points a game. You got a couple guys in Nurse and Goki who have got about 43-point field goals on the year. Bearcats got it going. So Northwest Conference belongs to Spencerville. It's their seventh overall league title, and as I mentioned, their first outright. How about the MAC? St. Henry wasn't beaten all season in yep. conference play, and, and they are deservedly so the MAC champs. Well, they really came out and laid it on Coldwater the other night and, and let Coldwater go, you know what, there's no doubts here. We're going to take this basketball game away from you, which is what they did early in the basketball game. Of course, the debate was, what are we going to do with player of the year? You know, is it Kyle Arns from Versailles? Is it Ryan Mikesell from St. Henry? The, the league decided to go with Mike Sell. Why not? 22 points, almost 23 a game, over 11 rebounds a game, uh, almost four blocks, almost four assists. And the stat I like, he has 3.7 deflections per game. That means almost once a quarter, he's knocking the ball away from the opponent, trying to score, disrupting their offense in some way. Coaches track deflection. That's a stat we don't talk about very often, but a very important one. He uses his length so well he on really both does. sides of the floor. He'll be our OIO prep profile on Thursday, so tune in Thursday Sports Report a little more on the backstory of Ryan Mike Sells. He gets mm -hmm. ready to go play at Dayton, but yep. first he's excited about the postseason as we all are here. How about the WBL Salina? Great season for the Bulldogs. They're the outright Western Buckeye League champs. I had a chance to see their game when they played Elida the other night, the game which I thought was kind of a trap game for them. I thought Elida was getting much, much better, but Salina was so good in the first half. Logan DeLong had 21 of his 24 uh, in the first half. They took the ball inside very well. They didn't turn the basketball over. They were very impressive in what they did the other night. Final league that was decided on Friday night was the BBC. Liberty Benton remained perfect in league. How about that? Took the crown back from Arlington. Arlington won it a year ago. LB takes it out this year. Um, they had three guys in double figures that night. And really a, a kind of a no-doubter against Pandora Gilboa. They got things going for them. In their 16, uh, they have 16 games where they've held their opponents to 50 points or less. Always with LB. It starts with defense. It was that way with Coach Williman. It's now that way with Coach Gherkin. It starts with defense. Plus, they don't turn the ball over very much. So they're not giving up transition baskets the other way. Very solid defensively. And, of course, a good offensive effort the other night. Great job by Coach Gherkin. And... A well-deserved yep. league title for the Liberty Bend Eagles. The rest of the conferences were already decided. Mm -hmm. So now, Saturday, a couple of non-conference games to end the season. Let's just talk about a couple of those. First one, Macomb over Perry. And I thought this was an interesting game. Both teams playing pretty well entering the tournament. Which one do you think will go further? Well, that, that's a really interesting thing. Of course, Macomb got a win uh, over Kaleida on Tuesday night, 68-51. Yeah, yeah, and they got their offense going. They ran up and down the floor. Of course, once you get a big lead on Kaleida, it's kind of difficult for them to come back because of their style of play. But they just ran circles around them in the second half. They got their transition game going. Perry and, and Macomb was a transition game. It was 69-60. Both of those teams about the same height-wise. Get up and down the floor very well. Um, tough pick. I kind of like what Perry's doing right now, especially with what's going on in their particular tournament bracket and how some of the teams have played out a little bit. Poling's back. His last three games have been in double figures. He's had 14 threes in his last three games. Jared Poling, of course, makes all those other pieces a lot better for Perry. Um, it's a good basketball team for Perry right now. And that's the type of team that you could see get hot. They Remember, they won 14 in a row earlier in the year. So if they're hitting their stride at the right time, watch out. Yeah, they really are. And, of course, you know, it's a perimeter offense team. And they get up and down the floor. They go to the basket well. And then when you've got Poli standing around the three-point line, Jacoby Line Harvey takes the ball in the basket very well. So does Plummy Gardner take it basketball very well. And then you've got Poli standing around the three-point line when you collapse the defense. If they, if they can stop people from scoring, especially tall teams from scoring inside, it's a good Perry team. A lot of weapons, and speaking of weapons, Lima yep. Senior has a lot of weapon, weapons as well. A much anticipated game that took a little longer to actually play thanks to some snow, but Lima Senior beat Defiance on Saturday. You and Mark 
had the call, yep. Mark Kuntz, and uh, hope you enjoyed it watching it on WOSN. Spartans playing really well. They really are. I think Coach Simpson has shortened his bench a little bit. They've gotten down to playing seven and sometimes eight players. I think that's helped a little bit. It's nice to get a lot of kids in the game, but when you're playing 10, 11, 12 guys, it's tough for anybody to get enough significant minutes you know, to make a difference in what you're doing. So by shortening his bench, I think he's really got a good rotation going right now. And they were just dynamic in the second quarter the other night. They scored 32 points, gave up just 14. They made 13 out of 16 shots, some from deep. When they're playing that well and scoring that well, Matt, they're very tough to beat. It was a game of runs. Each yep. team went on a certain, a couple of different runs. In the third quarter, Lima Senior had already built its lead. Let's take a look at a couple of plays from that third quarter. You got yep. your Telestrator ready? Got a Telestrator we're ready, ready to, go. ready to okay. go here a little bit. Explain why the Spartans were able to defeat Defiance on the road. Well, first of all, let's just start, start things going. Look at this baseline out of bounds play here that Coach Simpson has called. It's going to be a nice inside post move to Flowers. But what really sets it up is we go back and look at it a second time through. First of all, you can see right here that Coach Simpson is called to play. But right in here, sealed his man off, got done what he wanted to get done. That play is typically a screen in the corner. And that's what happened on that particular play. Here comes X off the screen, draws two defenders plus a third staring at him. So he gets a basket down inside. Let's look at this again. As he comes off this screen right here, see the screen and roll opportunity, this defender is responsible if X goes all the way to the goal. So he's staring at X as he comes off the screen and leaves his man wide open. And of course, the inside pass is what really makes the thing go right here. The pass comes off the trap. He's got Singleton guessing he's going to the goal, and that's a nice pass down inside. And then this next play, our third play in the sequence, is all set up by playing defense. Here's the strip inside. The good hustle play, you throw it ahead. Scrambled after it and the return pass right across court. And as you can see as we go through this again, how well it's set up defensively. Here's the strip inside. You've got numbers right away. Here's the look ahead pass. But what really makes it go is when we get to right here, you can see the basketball gets passed cross court. Watch all the defenders go right to the one man and leave the clear path to the opposite lane for the pass cross court. Draws two defenders. That's very unselfish basketball. When the Spartans are in transition, set up by defense, they're good. That's the type of play you like to see. Yeah. Real team play there. Like you said, took the words well, out of my mouth. Very unselfish. I believe that's what Mark Kuntz called it when yeah. he had the call as well. When you're sharing a basketball like that, Matt, and you're out in transition, and you're willing to give up your own particular scoring opportunities to get your teammate involved, it makes everybody happy. Everybody gets going. It, it kind of juices your whole bench up a little bit. Coach Simpson's doing a really nice job. And we sat close to Coach Simpson the other night. He is on his players all the time, demanding perfection. It's really shown now as they've gotten into the tournament play. What a season they've had. They Just really three have. losses, and it's been a real joy to cover them. Yep. And we'll see how far they can make it in the tournament. Speaking of the tournament, though, yep. now, I've got a question for you. Is there a team that you've watched over the past two weeks, maybe since our district draw yep. show, that you're a little more on board with now, that they've convinced you they're going to go deeper than you originally thought? Well, the easy answer to that is, Matt, no. We just talked about the Spartans, and, and we've thought they're going to have a good tournament run. I would guess they're going to be in the regionals unless they get an upset somewhere along the way. So, you know, I, I would think the Spartans, we've already covered them. We've covered Salina a little bit, too, and I think they're setting in a pretty good spot. May well run into defiance in yeah, the regional semis. that could semis. be an interesting yeah, regional that, game. That could happen. But to go back to your original point, I think Ottawa-Glandorf, They've won five out of their last uh, five hundred games in a row, six out of their last seven. They're playing defense extremely well right now, giving up just a few points per game. And, and of course, they've got all those juniors who have been kind of surrounding Noah Bramlage all year long, and now those juniors have played 20-plus basketball games. And, and I just think they're going to be, obviously, their fan favorites, and they've got a good draw. Everybody they played in the tournament so far is like Archibald, let's say. They've beaten Archibald already, so I, I think OG's in a great spot. And then Wayne Trace. Uh, obviously, they have to get over the sin problem, who hurt his knee and her ankle, foot, whatever it was, yeah, with a broken, broken, broken foot. Broken foot yeah. They'd like to get him back. Um, the question is how well he'll be as far as conditioning and skill level and so on if they do get him back. And that's a hole that they have to replace. But the way they're playing right now, I'll bet Wayne Trace is a regional team as well. I think Coach Linder is expecting them back ar around districts, yep. which should be perfect timing for them. It is. And, of course, the question is when you get to that particular point, how good a shape are you in? Can you run up and down yeah. the floor? And how are your basketball skills? And can you contribute to what we're trying to do on the floor and, and fit in with your teammates and all those types of things? When you come in in the middle of a tournament run, that's a little bit difficult sometimes. But uh, he would be a welcome addition by the time they get to the regionals. Without a doubt. Yep. Let's take a look at some of our results from Tuesday night. Again, we're taping this yep. on Wednesday. There's a slew of games this evening. That we'll right. cover, hopefully cover next week for you on Mark's Madness. But get started with a good sectional semifinal at Bath. It was USV and New Knoxville. We know the winner gets Perry, 
and an injury played a big role in this game. Yeah, it really did. Uh, Cam Parker for USV, he's 6'6", he's an all-conference player. Uh, he turns a knee, does something to a knee in uh, about 54 seconds into the basketball game, and that completely changed the picture of the game. They wanted to go down inside offensively and score with him not there. That was a problem, plus their rim protection wasn't nearly as good as it would have been. They give some easy baskets down inside that they normally wouldn't have done with him in there. So they lose him offensively, they lose him defensively. Camp has 26 points. Howell made three big three-point three, three field goals early in the, the first half to kind of set the tone for things. New Knoxville won, they got a lead, they made a bunch of free throws late. I thought it was a nice win for Court Flatterjohn and his team, but certainly it was a difficult way to end the season for USV. You're 17 and five, you lose your first tournament game because of an injury, that's a tough situation. Yeah, 62-52 the final, and yep. just like you said, I mean, you don't like to see injuries being a part of the outcome of a game like that. Well, it is, Matt, and of course, all coaches worry about that. You know, those, those three things we always talk about, you know, fouls, fatigue, and the flu. And in this case, we talk about flu, we talk about anything that might take a player out because of a physical problem. You know, they hit, and this time they hit USV, and it comes at an inopportune time for them. And, and really, it took a very good season. It kind of puts a damper on it by the way it ended, but uh, tough loss for them, but good win for uh, NK. Now we'll see New Knoxville versus Perry yep. coming up in the sectional finals. Bath got a win over Tiffin Columbian, 64-46 yep. at Limer Senior. Riverdale on top of Parkway at St. Mary's. Again, that's where St. Henry's kind of waiting in the wings at St. Mary's. Coldwater also defeated Hopewell Loudon at St. Mary's. How about Bluffton over Van Buren at Defiance? I thought this was an interesting game. I did too. Kind of a pick'em game. Rumor got hot for Bluffton and, and scored a lot of points for them. And I thought that was kind of a pick'em game. Uh, Van Buren couldn't stop Bluffton offensively, and that kind of Bluffton surge has continued. Had that kind of rough spell in January through the middle part of the year, but the Pirates got it going right now. For sales back on track, they had lost three straight entering yeah. the tournament. They had a bye to the sectional final and defeated National Trail, so they're into the district semifinals now. I like to see that. I want to see the Tigers playing well as they get deeper into the tournament. Yeah, and of course, part of what happened with for sales, Matt, is who they're playing right now. You know, they had some games where they got kind of the lower seeded teams, and so you know, with that type of situation, they got a comp couple of confidence wins that they could take care of, and now into the districts. Minster defeated Harder Northern, yep. which sets up uh, an interesting matchup against Spencerville, a game that you told me I had yeah. forgotten. It was canceled during the regular season. They were supposed to play back in December. It was canceled because of Minster's football success, and they couldn't find a date, particularly with all the snow problems and everything else. To So they didn't get a regular season matchup, and so we get to get it now in the tournament. Already mentioned Macomb over Kaleida. Yep. And the game of the night might have been Ridgemont, Waynesfield, Goshen, a one-point game, 56-55. Yeah. How did it end? Uh, tough loss for Waynesfield. They go to the free throw line down two with just a few seconds left in the basketball game. They make the first, make the second. Nope, wiped it out. Player was in the lane early on the free throw attempt, so the basket didn't count. The free throw didn't count. Waynesfield loses by a point. Good win for the Gophers. Lipsick beat Fort Jennings, yep. and Rushi is also into the districts already with an 89-26 win yep. over Bradford at Piqua. That's pretty dominant victory. That's pretty dominant. Of course, we know how good Rushi is, and of course, to play a team with Bradford that's outman, good win for the Raiders. And we'll have some games for you to watch from the Coldwater sectional coming up later this week on WOSN. Arlington versus Ada, Fort Recovery, New Bremen. You can be on the lookout for those. Let's finish up with some girls talk, yep. and we're already into district with the girls. Paulding District, we're going to have Bath versus Defiance and Wapak versus Wauseon. Top four seeds, no surprises. That's right. Seed one, two, three, and four all made it through the sectional play into the district. Um, obviously, got to favor the Wild Kittens. You know, they've defeated Wapak by 16. They've, they've defeated Defiance at home back in early January by a huge margin, 67 to 18. Got to favor the Wild Kittens. Upsets can happen, of course, but I think they're in a good spot right now. The, the real interesting game, I think, though, is Wapak and Wauseon. Yeah, it should be a good one. Yeah, to see if it can be an all WBL final. Coldwater upsets Grove in overtime at Wapakoneta High School, which sets up an OG Coldwater matchup in one district semifinal and then LCC versus Liberty Benton in the other. I've always been intrigued by this district, which will be played out at Elida, and I think we have two really good semifinal matchups. Yeah, I would agree with that. The one I'm really interested in is LCC and LB and how that plays out because LCC has the type of team that can beat Liberty Benton in the fact that Liberty Benton's got those big people inside. It's tough to get inside and score against 6'1 and 6 foot, so you got to be able to shoot the ball from the perimeter, and that's LCC's game. If Madison Stolley gets going and some of her teammates and start stroking them from the three-point line, turn into a transition track meet type game, there's a scenario where the, the LCC Thunderbirds win the basketball game. Liberty Benton will be favored. They're undefeated. But there's a scenario there for the T-Birds. I'm glad you brought up Madison Stolley because oh. we did our top 10 girls basketball players last week. She absolutely belongs yep. on that list. That was a complete oversight on my part. She's only a sophomore. She's averaging 21 points and 8 rebounds. She set a school record early in the year with a 39-point contest. She's 
completely dominant, and she still has two more years after this one. I, I saw them early in the year, and then quite honestly, they were in a blowout game, and she stroked a couple three balls, and she just turned around like it was ho hum, just another day at the office. She's and, really and talented. She's very talented, and looking forward to her for the next couple years. Ada over Fort Recovery to now set up a matchup yep. with Marion Local. We were kind of on these Lady, yeah. Lady Bulldogs. We had a feeling they might be able to pull the upset. They did, but now they're going to run into the top seed in the district. Yeah, Marion Local, of course, with their size and Allie Toby and those type of players. It'll be a real matchup, but this is an Ada team, which we've kind of, until we brought it up last week, flying under the radar type situation. But Tori Wiss having a good year. See how the rest of them play out in this, this game. USV New Knoxville and the other one. Uh, yeah. It's funny, you get the boys just played, and now the girls are going to play this time yeah. in the districts. Well, you know, uh, USV was... Fortunate, I guess would be the way to say it. 20 to four in the fourth quarter against Minster. They missed a ton of free throws through the course of the regular season, the regular part of the basketball game, the first three quarters. Got it going late enough to win the basketball game, but you don't want to get behind and very often try to win by 20 to four in the last quarter. Yeah, that was quite the comeback in the, in the fourth quarter for the Lady Rams. Finally, the Crestview, Ottoville, Lipsick, Kaleida. Again, no upsets there. That'll be played at Lima Senior. And I got to look at Crestview as the overwhelming favorite. You do. And of course, they'll get the number four seed, Ottoville. Um, Coach Clayman does a good job with his team. Do they have enough talent that they can prepare? Because Coach Rickard's got 300 wins at Crestview. That's an interesting situation. Then number two, Lipsick. Number three, Kaleida. Uh, Kaleida won that basketball game in the regular season by 10 back on just a couple weeks ago on February 17th. See if that plays out again or if Lipsick's able to come through and win this time. Lots to look forward yep. to. Can't wait to get the results so we can break them down. Now let's get you our broadcast schedule. Get ready. This is, this is one of our <laughs> longer ones. Hey, buckle in. Here we go. Get started Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Arlington versus Ada boys from Coldwater. Thursday at 8.30, Fort Recovery versus New Bremen boys from Coldwater. Those will be sectional semifinal matchups. Friday at 7.30 p.m., Marion Local versus Ada girls from Wapak, district semis. Friday at 9, the other district semifinal, USV versus New Knoxville girls. Friday at 10.30 on WOSN, Miller City versus OG boys. That'll be a sectional final. Friday at 10.44, following 44 on 44, Spencerville versus Minster boys from Bath. And then these aren't misprints. Friday at 11.59 p.m., Columbus Grove versus Macomb boys from OG sectional final. That'll be immediately following the Miller City Ottoville boys game. And then Friday at 1014 a.m. on WTLW. Yes, that's after midnight. Hope you like some late night basketball. Perry versus New Knoxville boys from Bath. Saturday at 9, Salina versus Otsego boys from Lima Senior, sectional final. Saturday at 10.30, Elida versus Bath boys from Lima Senior, also a sectional final. Then Saturday at 10.30, after the sports report on WTLW, we'll have the D3 girls district final from Elida. That'll be the winners of OG and Coldwater taking on the winner of LB versus LCC. Sunday at 7.30, it's the D2 girls district final from Paulding. That'll be the Wasion Wapak winner against the victor of Bath Defiance. Sunday at 9 p.m., to round out our broadcast schedule, D4 Girls District from Lima Senior District Final, Crestview versus Ottoville winner versus Lipsick and Kaleida's winner. Who decided on 11:59 and we had to get the games in sometime a doubleheader. Team, why not midnight? Who decided on 11? Oh, well, we have, we have a very strict schedule that we like to okay. keep here at WOSN. Ben, ben, did that? ben Reif okay. is very he knows yeah. exactly how long these going to take games are going to take and went to schedule them. I go overtime. He does a great job. Just think, look at all look at all the games he scheduled for us. I hope you like basketball. This month's going to be a lot of fun. And thank you again, Mark, yep. for doing what you do so well on Mark's Madness. That'll do it for this edition, and we hope to be back here for you next week with more basketball action to break down.